All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcasts, plural, all right, because we are recording this as a crossover episode uh, between uh, the professional volunteer and my friend Jeremy um, over at Crew First Culture, all right, so we've got Jeremy on. Jeremy, what's going on? Not much, man. Glad to have you all here and glad to be here on yours. Absolutely. This is going to be fun. And we brought John back as our crossover co-host. He's getting the, uh, the, the referee. He's, <laughs> the referee. <laughs> he's the referee. So, um, yeah, so we're going to, we're going to, we almost got ourselves like a little mini round table here on the podcast, which, uh, which should be, which right. should definitely be fun. Um, and we're going to start our conversation today um, focusing on a post that was shared around a little bit the other day I shared it on our Instagram and Facebook page and you know I, I saw it I, I don't know where I saw it initially but that's usually how things go you see it somewhere else and then you share it and all your buddies share it but it was a um, quote from uh, Frank Viscuso from Step Up and Lead and basically it was focusing on respect and that was the title of it, Respect, and Never Pushing a Loyal Person to the Point Where They No Longer Care. All right? So respect and not pushing a loyal person to the point where they no longer care. So that's where we're going to kick off the conversation today. And this kind of ties in for me a little bit because I did get a request uh, on a similar topic, not word for word the same, but, but very similar through one of the Instagram questions that, that have been put up in the last week. So... Let's dive in. What do you guys, uh, what do you guys think about um, keeping loyal members, well, for happy, I guess, you know, and around and engaged? I think for me, you know, when you, you kind of shot this topic at me during the week to, to see if that's something that, that I would like to discuss during this and it, I told you it kind of gave me a physical response and it did literally like when I read it, it kind of one of those things where you get a little goosebumps and my eyes even watered a little bit because, you know, I've, I feel like I've lived that life. You know, I've, I've been the guy that has tried to, to do and do and do. And it just kind of feels like you're either one, you're, you're being just worn out and nobody else is giving or two, you're working, working, working for nothing because nobody is using that, that work. And, and so there's really two different areas of my career. I feel like I've kind of lived that. And so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, it. I'm going to try to stay kind of step back a little bit emotionally because I don't want to get too, too uh, <laughs> fired up with it, but I'm definitely interested in kind of hearing what you guys say as well with it because you right. you have both kind of been in that fire chief role and that that's that'll be interesting for me to hear kind of your angle on it john what do you think uh well i could go off on a whole tangent and get fired up and start throwing things because i was in you know coming off of being fire chief is one of the hardest things you'll ever do in the fire service in a volunteer agency come become you know from fire chief and then coming out of fire chief, two of the hardest things you'll ever do. And, um, you know, I went through a really hard time with, with my old department. Um, and you know, I know I never, I never really talk about it on, on air or anything. I, I will never give details about it because that's not, you know, anybody's business, but sure. Definitely learned, definitely learned a lot about myself and, uh, and other people. You learn who your true friends are and, um, you know, we'll get yeah. into it. We'll get into it. Yeah, I, well, I won't. It, you know, I think, it, you know, and it's, I always, <laughs> I always say, and, and, and I think the three of us have talked about this in one way or another, either on air or off air a couple of, couple times, you know, it's hard to remain nameless and neutral sometimes when you're doing this you know it's, yeah. it's hard. you know we all try to you know for obvious reasons not get specific regarding 
our individual agencies or our past agencies or, you know, things that we've been through with obviously specific people. Um, you know, but I know from some, some things I've gone through personally in my career, um, which have led me to where I am today, which I'm in, you know, in retrospect, grateful for now, you know, when things were happening, um, I was bitter, pissed off, you know, not happy, um, you know, but now looking at it years later, it, it, you know, some of the things that, that happened to me and molded me are probably some of the best things that could have ever happened to me. But at the time I didn't see it that way. And it kind of directly leads to this topic because, you know, I've always been very dedicated to the volunteer fire service, regardless of what my rank has been. You know, it's funny, I was setting up this little area here for when I moved into the other side of the basement for the podcast. And, you know, I, we still had pictures and boxes from when we moved into this house and it's been years already, you know, so I was going through the pictures and plaques and all kinds of crap and I'm finding, I'm finding stuff, for, you know, that was given to me at my classes and photos. And one of the plaques that I found was from the year after, the year after I went out as chief the first time in my old department. And that department was quite a bit busier than the one I'm in now. Uh, but the year after I went out as chief, they presented me with a plaque as like a top responder for like 380 calls that year, you know, and not, I, I don't like to make it personal, but that's not the norm. Like, what do you think? You know, normally when a guy goes out as chief as in a volunteer department, it's not, I know guys that do it. So I'm not saying I'm the only, I'm the only one, but I'm definitely not. John, you're probably were the same way. You probably stayed involved, yeah. I would imagine. But yeah. there, there's lots of guys out there that when they're done, they're done. <laughs> yeah. I think that we could go like a million different ways on this topic. And uh, you could do a show just on becoming not chief anymore, you know, in a volunteer yeah. agency. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, and there's really no way to handle that. You know, and my, my situation was really unique because during my last two years as chief, we put a career agency, you know, we put a, a career department on. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we winded up hiring two of my friends. We promoted the one that we already had to a lieutenant. Like, you know, I was in charge of them. It was a really, really dynamic situation. Um, so to add all the other bullshit that you got to deal with when you're done being chief, um, you know, we dealt with that too. So it was like extra, it was way extra. Yeah. Um, but I think what you're saying, you know, and listen, the chief, is, the chief is in that position because they are loyal to the agency and they are, you know, they respect the agency. They have pride in the agency, but then I think it comes to a point where, you got to take a step back. And that's where I, you know, I was chief for eight years and it was too long, you know? So like, it's, it was a little bit of everybody's fault that what happened in my place was like, I, I was just burnt out, you know? Sure. Sure. And that I happens. Had to yeah. I had to take a step back and then they start feeding off of that bad energy that you have. And, you know, now that I'm older and I realize that, you know, and look back on it, I, I've learned that, that, you know, it's, it was a two way street, you know? Yeah. So taking it out of, we're kind of, we're, we're kind of zeroing in on that, getting out of that leadership role, but you know, because that's what we're familiar with, mm -hmm. when, you know, that's what John and I are familiar with anyway, but taking it away from that, that Avenue for a minute and just broadening, uh, broadening the conversation to people in general, you know, firefighters in general, members in general, um, that, just at some point get to the point where they've had enough because they feel like they're giving their everything and they're not being appreciated. All right. And we, it, w I think the three of us have had this conversation before. There are some people that you will, that will never ever please. Right. And okay. those people I think are in it for the wrong reason. All right. I'm talking about people that you know are, their heart's in the right place. They're dedicated to the organization. They're dedicated to being a firefighter. And whether it's the culture of the agency, the morale, the leadership, whatever the hell it is, a difference in opinions that they just cannot get over, um, 
just one day it's that's it you know they're done it, 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 you know they either move on to someplace else or yeah. or the community as a whole loses a very very valuable person i think for me kind of tying a, a few things that you've said together and kind of where i was kind of visualizing what what this would be about is you know this topic has really, if I want to strip it down, this topic has put me in the seat I'm in right now, talking to you to over a podcast because I've got a Instagram page and you know, blah, blah, blah. All of that stuff probably would not exist if I had some type of feedback, some type of, uh, trying to think of how to say it. so so really what led me to all that is me trying to start some type of leadership program some type of professional development program mentor something at, at my at my at my department mm -hmm. this offering 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 volunteering whatever we need it you know just over and over again and nothing absolutely nothing and that just started to build resentment and started to build anger and all of these things inside me that were about to start getting results for me that were going to tear apart everything that I had tried to do. You know what I mean? To the point of shooting out hateful emails or, you know, whatever else, just sure. because all that stuff was inside. And so finally it just decided, okay, if I'm not going to be allowed to do that at my department, then I need to find ways to get this out. And so, of course, like I said, that led to, you know, Instagram and that led to writing some articles and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then here we sit because of that. And yeah, I just, I feel like that that's just, it's just a hard place to be. You know, you get, you know, I've heard somebody else say it. It's like, departments tend to treat their best employees or their best involved, their best volunteers like their worst. And I'm not saying that's everywhere, but you, you tend to have some guys that want to stand out be, or that just naturally stand out because, you know, they're for lack of better words, they're just rock stars. And, you know, that intimidates a lot of people. At, so, you know, there's, there's a lot of people and if those people are in leadership above them, it doesn't go well because, you know, that, that threatens their rank, that threatens their authority. And so I, I think that's kind of a long way around maybe saying my story is kind of mirroring what you said earlier about, you know, that it sucks going through it, but those things are what have led us to where we're at now. And so it's just, it just becomes part of your, your story really. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, let me ask you a question regarding your journey and where you are now. Now, you know, following your Instagram and, you know, and your social media, you're never by yourself. You know, you're putting, I see you putting up training videos and, you know, and some, some good stuff. So you obviously have some buy-in right from, Yes. Some, some guys, yep. which is, yep. which is good. Um, and, and I, you know, you always get a combination. I feel personally of both you get buy-in and then you get people that are for, you know, are like, well, who the hell does this guy think he is? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, like what's he think he's some freaking social media star or something like, mm -hmm. so do you, do you, do you see both sides of that? currently where you are now i know i do you know so i'm just yeah curious if you guys a, a, a little bit i mean i didn't mean to jump in front of john i'm talking a little bit uh i yeah. think for me i'm a little different situation than you guys you know i i work as a paid department sure but then i volunteer at home so there's kind of a mix of of the two for me and and i'm just starting out with the volunteer so i don't have near the experience with all that as you guys, but I'm, I'm definitely excited to, to be a part of that. You know, I've some of the, the training things that I've posted here lately are from the, the volunteer department and that. Okay. That's why I'm doing it is because and these are the guys that are responding to my house. You know, I, I work an hour and a half away from home. 
Mm -hmm. And if something were to happen when I'm at work, these, those are the, the, those are the men and women that are responding to my house, to my family. So why wouldn't I want to help them any way I can? And so I haven't, I hope that, I hope that they will be kind of, you know, and like we talked about in an earlier thing with you guys, you know, I'm trying to go into it humbly and, and just offering what I can and not trying to just bulldoze my way in. But, uh, I hope, I hope that I can add something there as far as like my paid department. I think there is some of that, you know, posting things because you think you're perfect or posting things because of this and that. And, and I just, you know, it's whatever, you know, if, if that's what you want to feel, that's fine. It, it's not the case. So it, it doesn't matter. And, and I, I feel like it's been a really good way to get my crew, my personal crew, out involved and, and like you said bought in and i'm lucky to have some some people that are kind of bought into that so that's that's where i'm at with that so what what and you might not be able to say but what department are you having or had the problems in more in the volunteer or the career world or what is you know your opinion on it so i've got I've got 18 years at the the paid department I'm at. That's the only place I've ever been. Right. I I did a little volunteer uh, time, probably about two years, a while back when I lived in a small town. Then we moved away, and then now I'm just probably two two and a half months into the the volunteer department here. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty pretty obvious that it's the 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 place right. that I've been sure. at for, you know, eight years. And so, you know, it's fine. I, I, I think when I first started all this, if I look back at my posts and my writing, I can see that there was a lot of anger, a lot of, you know, I never pointed fingers or never named names, but you could tell it was a fighting against weak leadership mindset. And, you know, there was a lot of, you could just feel it. And, and all that. And I've tried to get away from that because I don't want that to be my, my message. You know, I don't want that to be everything. So, you know, it, I think I'm sure every department has it. I was just going to say that I'm sure everybody who cares this much, you know, we like, I like to consider myself at the, like, uh, you know, like the motorcycle gangs of like the one percenters that are like the good guy, you know, good or bad guy, you know, however you want to spin that. Um, I like to consider myself and the people that I associate with at the top of the, you know, that 1% of like really guys who care, do the right thing. Like we're in it for the right reasons. Um, and I feel like everybody, if you talk to one of those guys has been through it, you know, has gone through some sort of negative thing. I mean, everything that I've been through in my life put me where I'm at today. You know, I wouldn't be teaching my mental health class if I didn't go through, you know, things, you know, you know, part of that, if I, you know, I wouldn't be teaching my officer class if I didn't be an officer. So, and learn all the things that I learned. So I think that it's part of our, it's part of us, you know, and it makes mm -hmm. us who we are today. And it's how you look at those things. And like you said, in the beginning, I was going to say in the beginning, everything happens for a reason. So everything happens for a reason in life. It, the way I met my wife, I mean, you can go down everything. However, you just don't see it right away. You know, some, it doesn't, some things have an immediate reaction, which people just live for, you know, likes on Instagram. Some people just thrive off of that, right? Other things have a long-term, uh, you know, it takes a while to see the, uh, an actual tangible, you know, um, result of what you're doing. So yeah. it's interesting that you said that right away. Cause that's, I mean, I, I live by that. So I, I think one thing that we can, we can tie into this, we talked about it before, is the culture of the organization itself, all right? And that's part of what Jeremy was just talking about with his early, you know, beginnings and what got him writing. You know, it's, it was the culture of the leadership, right? The culture of the organization. Um, and, and one thing that I found is, you know, if that culture – is is one of acceptance right and when i say one of acceptance i mean one of accepting people's opinions 
whether they're right, wrong, or indifferent, you know, whether you agree with them or you don't agree with them, not having a culture that doesn't accept how people are feeling, right? And how those, how those things are handled, right? So I, you know, I feel that it's extremely important whether you completely disagree with somebody or not to hear out their opinions on things, right? Their opinions on the leadership, their opinions on the organization, their opinions on how we train or whatever it may be. It's extremely important to, to really listen to those people and, and make them feel like they're being listened to. And if you don't agree with what they're saying, be honest, you know, and tell them why you don't agree with what they're saying. You know, right. it, that, that's, that's conversation, right? That's well, a difference yeah, of be opinion. Able to have to, you got to be able to have that conversation. Right. You got to be able to have that conversation. Part of this topic that we're talking about and part of the, the, the big issue in some agencies is they don't have the ability to do that. It's the organization's way or nobody's way, or it's the leadership's way or nobody's way, or it's the click that runs everything, whether they're in a leadership role or not. It's the click that steers the direction of the organization's way or nobody's way. And they could give a crap about what anybody of, with a differing opinion has to say. And, you know, when you're a well-educated person, and you take this job seriously and you take the training seriously and, and, and you take the lifestyle seriously and you try and try and try and try and try. And every time you try, somebody's just pushing you back, pushing you back, pushing you back. There's going to, it's going to come to a point where you're either going to use that energy, you know, like Jeremy, like you did, you know, well, you're either going to use that energy and start writing and start blogging and start posting and start sharing your own you know, thoughts, um, or you're going to give up. You're just going to quit. Yeah. You know, you're going to be like, why am I, why am I, especially in the volunteer world, right? It's not yeah. like you're doing it because at the end of every week you're collecting a paycheck, right? Yeah. And you, you, if you ever get to that point where you're sitting back and you're like, why am I doing this? Right. I'm doing this because I want to give back. I want to give to my community because I love it, because it's something that's a part of me. But eventually for everybody is going to have a breaking point where they're going to be like, why am I continuing to do this? Like, it's not making me happy anymore. It's it's, yeah. you know, it's the cause of all my, you know, everything that's not happy. I've told a, a couple of the guys that at the the department here, the little department that I'm on now, you know, I, there is no end to the respect that I have for those people. I mean, working as a firefighter, that's what we do all day long. If, if, if we have free time, we need to be doing something, you know, training or whatever. And a lot of people don't do it. I get it, but that's our job. Sure. And, and even as a crew that does something literally every day, training wise, there are so many areas that still get either forgotten or get, you get rusty in and then all that. And that's being a paid firefighter. And it's like, I have no idea how people that just volunteer and, you know, have lives and have jobs and all that, how they stay up on it. And to see, to see people, you know, like, like we did some hose work here a couple of weeks ago with, some of the, you know, whoever showed up and just to see them on a weekend or a weekday during the week, you know, whoever was off, whoever was available, show up, spend, I don't know, we were out there an hour and a half or so, spend that time when they could have been doing anything else. You know, obviously they're off of work, so they had a chance to do basically whatever they want to do, but they were there training with me in a, in a uh, parking lot pumping some, some hose, flowing some water. And that's just, it, it just really, I, I don't know. I just have a lot of respect for that. And I, I I've never really understood the rift between the paid and the volunteer. I, I, people that, people that have that stance, I just, I don't get, I wish it wasn't like that, you know, and, and I'm not saying it is for everybody, but uh, anybody that's paid to do the job, should have 
unlimited respect for people that do the same thing and don't get paid for it. I just, I don't understand it. And, and so that has been a really good thing for me to see, just see these guys giving everything they have and getting really nothing monetary out of it. And, sure. and that's helped me to kind of have a remain to have a good attitude about it all, even going back to work. And so, it's, it, it's, it's been a, a cool thing to be a part of. Yeah. You know, and I don't know where all that, sometimes I think some of it is, I don't know, just people like jumping on the bandwagon. You know, I, I find it hard to believe there's that many people with that much, you know, hatred for somebody doing the same job as they are, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and yeah, but listen, it goes both ways. Let me just it, say no, it, it goes it both does. ways. It does. It does. And let me just finish my thought. So it's <laughs> and, 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 no, and my thought is this, you know, you're, you're always going to have, it, it doesn't matter if it's firefighting or any other job. You're always going to have your hardcore, like drank the union Kool-Aid guys. It doesn't matter <laughs> what union it is, right? It doesn't matter if it's the firefighters union, the steam fitters union, the, plumbing you it doesn't matter what the union is you're going to always have guys that you know hardcore drank that kool-aid and anybody doing that job coming in is a scab you know if they're not a part of the union you know um but leading into what john's gonna say go ahead <laughs> uh no it just it it, it goes both ways because, you know, so there are career guys who are assholes to volunteers. They just have that mentality that volunteers are a joke. And there are volunteers who automatically you're a pay guy. They shut you out and they think you're an asshole. So, exactly. you know, like I'll look at him, the pay guy. You know, but here, here's, here's a big problem that I see. And we've talked about this a million times. And I just had a conversation with another guy about it, an old, older guy. Social media has changed the fire service it's changed everything but yeah you're right it's changed <laughs> everything but look at how the fire service has changed and what i mean is you post a couple pictures you get a lot of likes you get followers and now all of a sudden you're legit right now all of a sudden you have like an ego and you have um, some credibility when in reality you don't have anything <laughs> and he, you, you know, this used to happen 10, 15 years ago with, um, you know, with actual work. So I think these people are getting these, this, this insta famous credibility and they're like carrying it around that they deserve this sort of respect or, or credibility, you know, whatever you want to call it. And the people who are actually putting in the work are like, wait, wait a minute. You know, that's what I, that's what I have seen has really like given me a bad taste in my mouth. Is yeah. that like fake bullshit? I, no. And I, and I agree. And that, and I think that is a big part of the issue at hand between the sides of the service, you know? Yes. Listen, if you're a, it, the same thing can be said on the career side as it can on the volunteer side. If you're a, if you're a career firefighter in a small town somewhere, I don't care where that small town is. All right. That only does a few hundred calls a year, or, you know, maybe you run EMS and you run a bunch of EMS calls a year, but you only run a few, a few calls on the fire side a year and you put yourself next to a guy that's, you know, work in a truck company in the Bronx. It, all right. You may be, you probably are, you may be trained to the same level, but on the experience side, you're, it's going to be a night and day difference, right? right? Same thing on the volunteer side, right? I can produce a boatload of certificates and training and, and all kinds of stuff that I've taken over the years. All right. But if I've never done anything with it, if all I've done, done is gone and sat in a classroom, or maybe I didn't even go and sit in a classroom, because <laughs> John, you and I both know mm. you, we've both experienced those guys that are like, oh, yeah, oh, I've got 50 years of experience. No, brother, <laughs> bullshit. You've got 50 years of service. That's a big difference. Right. <laughs> there's, there's a big, there's a big difference between 50 years of experience and 50 years of service, right? So 
you know, that's, that's a, a big part of what, what you're, what you're talking about here is, you know, that, that, you know, people think, and, and that's part of what drives us all crazy about some of the social media trends, you know, putting your gear on and just making a fool out of yourself. Right. right. It has nothing to do with the job. And I've caught myself, I've caught myself at fires or like buffing a fire <laughs> And, and listen, we all do it, you know? Um, so, and I'll catch myself like, look, oh, that guy's got a leather, you know, like look at his leather, leather helmet. He must be like, he must get a lot of work. But now that I'm older, now that I'm older and I know if everybody else's is clean and yours is the only one that's dirty and bent up, either you put it in the oven or, <laughs> or you bought it like that. <laughs> right. But like, all, you know, automatically we have that like persona, like, oh, my God, he's legit. He must be legit. You know what I mean? He's got like the, you know, like the sweet leather helmet. <laughs> but once you get to the point where, you know, like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. There's all that's almost like this. This uh, it's like entitlement, it, this facade of respect and like that he's legit. You know, well, and, and, and you can tie that back to anything. All right. And, and we joke all the time. We, we have, we break each other's balls constantly about the helmet thing, right. And the green <laughs> trucks and whatever, but it, listen, I can't tell you how many messages I've gotten through social media or email regarding the Euro helmets, right. I'll take ball breaking <laughs> from you. Right. I'll, right, I'll, right. I'll allow you to break my balls. Right. <laughs> because I, I know you, I know your background, like, yeah. When, when I get a message that says leather forever and I go and look at the, the Instagram of the person sending it <laughs> and I find out that the person sending the message is 16 years old and a junior firefighter in yeah. like, you know, uh, Saskatchewan, I'm like, listen, dude, don't, don't, yeah. don't. I'm not, I'm not going down this freaking road. You leather forever. What, what are you talking yeah. about? Your, your shoes? You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's this mentality. And we've had guys at the academy, they'll come to the academy with like, they, ha they have to wear, you know, recruits have an orange helmet and they'll have like an orange leather helmet. And we're like, where did you get that? And they're like, oh, I bought it. Stimulus check. Yeah, I bought it. I bought it on. <laughs> you bought a leather helmet? You're, you're going to get rid of it in a year. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, I'm going to have it repainted. Stop. Stop it. Yeah. You're a fraud. Just so you can post your leather helmet on Instagram and get some credit, get some insta insta credibility. It's true. It's, it's fucking true. bullshit. Was, when I first, you know, started posting a few of the the first training videos that we were doing as a crew, it, it a few of them got picked up by some of these bigger pages and like went crazy, and and it was just almost maddening some of the responses from it. You know, griping that we weren't wearing air packs the whole time and on air, you know, we weren't practicing like we were playing and, and uh, yeah. why are you drowning the house? You know, you're, you're, you're <laughs> waste, you're burnt, you're uh, trying to, you're ruining all the contents because you're putting so much, all this stuff is like, if, Stop. if you honestly train on air every time, that means you're probably not doing it very often because you're not, <laughs> You're, you're not going to be on air every time you do something, if you're doing something every day, right. you know, and, and I just, I kind of shoot, started shooting out some comments and, and some defense, you know, defending myself and my crew. And then I've just realized, yeah, there's no reason for it. It's, it's just say, let people say what they want to say and, you know, whatever, let them go on. And, and I'm not doing it. Like I said earlier, I'm not doing it because I think we do it perfectly. I'm not, I don't think we are the cookie cutter of, of what needs to be done. I just do it because we do things that I'd like to give people ideas of, Hey, look, these guys did this in the front of the fire station with nothing out of service, you know, just hooked to a hydrant and got some training, you know, that that's why yeah. I'm doing it. Right. And, the, and, and, and the idea, it, you know, it, Listen, some people are just going to comment just because they got absolutely nothing better to do. And they're trying to cause the insta fight, you know, the keyboard warriors. But, you know, if, if they're if they were really paying attention to what you're doing, wh why? What's the need to be in 
fully encapsulated PPE. The lesson isn't to beat the guys up. It's not to make yeah. it, it's not to beat them up in front of the firehouse. It's to teach them, yeah. you know, how to, how to stretch the line, how to move with the line, how to position the line. You know, it, you know, it, it's not an interior attack drill. It'd be different if you were crawling into a burn building with live fire and your guys yes. were dressed the way they were out in front of the fire. Exactly. That's, that's, yep. that's not the lesson, you know? So yep. shut up. Did you guys ever see the greatest showman? Uh, no. no. <laughs> no. So I put, a, I put a quote up the other day from the greatest showman. My wife just made me watch it and you should watch it. It's because it's a, it's an interesting story and it's very relatable to the fire service is that this guy wants to become a millionaire um, and gets all these crazy, you know, tallest guy in the world, ugliest woman ever, shortest guy ever. And he makes a show and people are coming to watch a show and he's making a lot of money. But then he has all these critics, right? All these critics that are like, oh, you freaks, you know, get out of here. Um, and he keeps pressing on. So what happens is basically he gets like hooked into the money and follows the money. You know, like you see these Instagram pages, do they follow and they just want to be huge, right? They don't, they're not doing it for the right reasons. Long story short, his circus burns down and it starts this Barnum and Bailey's or whatever circus mm -hmm. that is. Yep. Um, but the bottom line is what comes down to is like, stick with what you do best. You know, what he did best was entertain and be like a family with those people. And that's like, really, I was watching it and I was like, wow, that's like really like the firehouse. <laughs> you know, you have like people that are like so anti things, you know, where like the three of us, you know, we just stay in our lane and be like a family and do the right thing and keep pressing on, press on, press on, you know, and don't get it, don't get sucked into all that other bullshit out there. Um, and, and, you know, like you said before, eventually you're going to get like burned out, but you just, you just got to keep pressing on. It sucks. Yeah. You know, and, and, and not to minimize what, you know, what Jeremy just said about the, 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 the posts that you get, you know, the negative posts or the negative comments, whether it's what we're doing or anybody else is doing, or if it's, you know, regarding stuff at the firehouse, you know, uh, John, I know you and I have talked about that before that, that, that gets frustrating. You know, you read something and you don't want to let it bother you. You know, you're like, Oh, no, I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm just going to delete it. I'm not going to let it bother you. But then you find yourself like thinking about that kind you know, you find yourself thinking about it. I just, I got one last night. I got a sitting on the couch watching TV. I'm scrolling through my stuff and somebody sent me a message about something I posted in my story. I think it was my, uh, uh, joke of uh, joke to the police officers, you know, it's a joke. <laughs> Anybody that knows me, you know, look, we all do it. Right. 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 Any, any, whatever. Fine. This, this guy finds the time to send me a message referring like in detail to what I do at my nine to five saying, aren't, don't you do this for a living? Like, what are you talking about? And I'm, first of all, I'm like, all right, somebody either knows me personally or is following me enough to know exactly what I do, right? which is, you know, a little weird, but anyway, disturbing, yeah. a little, a little disturbing, but you know, you first read it and you're like, it kind of burns you up a little bit. And then I realize, you know, what solves all those problems, the block button, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, it just, it just gets to a point. You can't let it bother you. If you know, you know, if you know, you're trying to do the right thing, and, you know, and it's I hard think though. It's, it's, it's hard. And that's what I went through leaving my other, my other company. You know, we moved out of town also, but, um, like, man, they were crushing me. I would see them on every day. They were destroying me, making fun of me, you know, posting jokes about me, like obvious jokes about me. Um, and it was like really hard to get over really hard for me to move on. And it's still hard. You know, it's still, I had stuff, I was a member of the company for 20 years. Sure. You know, it was, it was, you know, I, all my uniforms, my shirts, you know, how much stuff you acquire. Yeah. yeah and, yeah. uh, you know, every time my Facebook memory would pop up, it'd be like with them. Um, but then I, you know, one day I was like, I, I'm done. I can't do this. It's too much energy. It's too much energy to be that negative. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, and you guys probably both like relate to that. You, you, it's just too much energy. So now I just take all that and I'm not saying it doesn't bother me. Some things that I see on Instagram piss me off, you know, really hurt me. 
Um, but I take it, I use it in the gym. I use it to, you know, get through my day. You know, I'm, I turn it into the best that I could turn it into. And, um, you know, I just try to turn it off, but you can never turn that completely off. Like you said, no. in the beginning, Jeremy, it's, yeah. you, you can't just ignore it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, but when like, it comes to some of this stuff and it's hard, it is really, really hard to do. But when it comes to some of this stuff, regardless of what it is and where it is, take, there, there's something to be said for taking the high road, you know? Absolutely. And, and it, it can be really, really tough to take yep. the high road, especially in today's day and age. Because like you said, John, it's not like you're dealing with people. It's not like if Jeremy and I had an issue and I'm taking the high road and he's taking the low road, going to the diner, like talking shit about me in town, you know, all right, yeah. whatever. Eventually he gets tired of doing it. Now with social media, you know, it's not like you're just talking to the guys at the diner in town. You're talking to a thousand or 2000 or 3000 people that you might not even really know, you know, just throwing jabs at somebody and yep. to take the high road on that is that can be really difficult you know throws so, a lot of stuff in I, your bucket that's for sure and I oh think yeah kind of why or while we're right on this specific topic is why that's hard for us and people like us is because we're passionate about what we're doing if if we were somebody like John mentioned earlier that we're just trying to get likes, you know, putting putting whatever out that want people want to see and hear so that we can boost our our status. And you know, it's probably not going to bother you as much because you don't care. You're just doing it for that. But people like us that have a true passion for the things that we're saying, our message, you know, whatever you want to call it that is that's the the people that that have the hardest time with things like that and I, I or speaking personally at least you know that's why that's why it's hard for me because i know i'm doing it for the right reasons i know that i'm trying to speak for something bigger than me it's not i'm not here because i like seeing my face on youtube you know what yeah. i mean and that's that's Absolutely. why it's hard for me that's what people didn't understand when i started my mental health class was like people were just like putting me, put, you know, putting me down for doing that almost. Like, look, oh, look at him. He just wants attention. He just wants this. He just wants that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm getting up in front of, fire, you know, other firemen telling them that like I was ready to kill myself to help you, not. <laughs> yeah. Like that's how not is a, that? There's no joke in there. There's, there's, right. not a, so, there's no punchline with that. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I started this, I started this two almost three years ago now. So when you, three years ago, there was nothing on social media about mental health. And, you know, it, it's hard. It, some days it's really hard for me because now all of a sudden these people with mental health are speaking all over the country and they got 10, 20, 30,000 like, uh, you know, follows and they're, and I'm like, wait, wait a minute. I've been doing this. For, I've been doing this for three years. You know, before, before it was cool to talk about mental health. <laughs> right, uh, right and that's why like you, you know and i got involved with with superior emergency training and those guys are great guys and and they're like dude that's your lane just i'm telling you that like and they've had some good talks with me that like just keep pushing your content you you put out content because that's what you believe in and that's what you do you don't worry about what anybody else does just keep doing what you're doing and, you know, either you're going to get the break that you're going to do or you're going to get like those you, people are going to start to realize like those consistent people are going to be like, all right, he's legit. You know, he's not yeah. here just like bullshit, you know. Well, and we've you and I have talked about this before. Listen, some, you know, it's easier for some people out there because they can attach their name to something that's large, you know, whether mm -hmm. whether it's a company or an organization or an agency, whatever it is, you know, you, you know, it's 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 easy to attach your name to something bigger. You know, uh, I mean, if I, you know, if I, if I was able to attach my name to, to a huge agency, you know, people would be like, Oh, sh this guy's gotta be legit. Cause he's from there, you know, <laughs> right, right. Um, it, which isn't necessarily the truth. You know, I mean, it, it's not the truth, you know, and it, it, you know, it's like you say, you just got to keep, pushing forward and, and, and doing what you're doing and you can't watch 
you, you can't get sucked into the social media vortex and watch numbers, you know, and think yep. that it's all about numbers. You know, I'd look, I'd rather have, I'd rather have a dozen people that are engaging, you know, like, 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 you, yeah. got, you know, you got, you have people that look at your content, listen to the stuff you're putting out and, you know, we'll shoot you messages We're like, yo, bro, that was a great episode. You know, yeah. you know, I felt like you were speaking to me today, you know, whatever it may be, you, you know, you're, you're going to have people that are going to engage and, you know, know, appreciate what's being said and, and what's happening. And you're not, then you're going to have people that, it just doesn't connect with. And that's cool. You know, I'd rather have a right. dozen people that oh, yeah. I'm connected with and, and, and really understand it and get it and, mm -hmm. and look and give you ideas. You know, I mean, you know, Jeremy's new well, to the, new to the, we're, we're both new to the podcasting world, right? Um, two months saltier than he is maybe but, you know you should get a leather helmet that's yeah, yeah. <laughs> bend it all up but yeah. um but you know it's 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 difficult somehow you want to keep pushing forward you want to keep pushing up pushing out contact uh, content because you don't want a gap you know you want people to stay engaged mm -hmm. but it's it's tough right jeremy to think of like, yeah. all right, what am I going to talk about this week? Who am I going to bring yeah. on? What, what, what's our topic going to be, you know, th that's going to be engaging for people, not yeah. just the three of us that are sitting on this, you know. Just on this put out call. stuff to say you put out stuff. Right. right. I think that uh, one of the quotes that always got, like, really hit home with me was, uh, the lions don't lose sleep over the opinion of the sheep. Mm -hmm. And, <laughs> I, like, I think my wife might have sent it to me when I was like having a bad day and I was like, wow, that's pretty, you know what I mean? That's pretty true yep. because, you know, like we were talking about before, we're like those one percenters that are like hard chargers and especially in the volunteer world. I mean, I, I'm not sure in your career department, but in the volunteer world, you could have guys who deliberately miss the truck to come, you know, they come to calls, but they deliberately miss the truck. So they don't have to do any work. And then yeah. you have guys who are like us, like, you know, the hard chargers who were like, you know, running people off the road to get to the firehouse. <laughs> um, but, you know, like for lack of a better term here, fuck them. Yeah. That's, yeah. Fuck yeah. them. Like, just keep doing you. you. You Listen, as long as you could go home and look yourself in the mirror, look your wife in the face, you know, and she loves you and that, and fuck those people. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, and you know, again, I think we've, we've, we really took our, our initial starting point and hit a lot of different, <laughs> hit a lot of different avenues, but it all, it all comes down to the same. It, it comes back to the same thing. You know, people, you know, you, you need to appreciate, you need to appreciate people, the people around you. Um, you need to appreciate why, why they're there, what their opinions are, right? Whether you agree with them or don't agree with them, you know, especially when you know, when you know that they're, that they're loyal people, you know, what, what, yeah. whatever it may be, you know, whether it's at your firehouse, at your job, um, because you're a volunteer at your career firehouse, because that is your career on social media, because you're running a business or promoting a philosophy or a product, you know, appreciating those people that continue to be there all the time that are loyal and respecting what they have to say, you know, not agreeing with them, respecting them. That's, that's, that's right. what it's about. You know, it's about, it comes back to respect. Yeah. And something else I think too, to add to that is, is us in leadership roles, anybody that's in a leadership role, it's finding, finding what those we have with us can do, you know, finding their strengths and using that, you know, finding ways of, of reaching all of your members and getting the most out of them because, you know, it, we're not all reached the same way. We don't all have the same strengths, right? We don't all have the same energy, you know, it, just finding a way to get to each individual and, and, getting the most out of that individual, I think is, is a pretty tricky thing in leadership because there's so many different personalities and, and everything. So that's kind of part of this as well. For sure. And we could, uh, we could do another 
we could do another hour. <laughs> we could do another hour on what I'm about to say. But from the, from the volunteer side of things, one thing that has frustrated me in the past, and we, I think we talked about this a couple other episodes ago or on, on something, is you know, pushing, pushing leadership positions, pushing guys through the line. Yeah. You know? Part of recognizing somebody's strengths, if somebody, is a re- somebody could be a really good lieutenant or a captain, right? And not be a good assistant yeah. chief or chief or deputy yeah. chief, you know, and you, you probably see that you probably see that they're a good hands on person. They're good for leading a smaller crew. But if it came to leading the agency, it's not their lane, right? It's not their yeah. wheelhouse. But in the volunteer service, like we've got bylaws against that. We've got rules against that. We've got year requirements against that. We feel that we, we got to push people through. We got to keep pushing them up, 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 up. But if we look over at the career side, it's not like that, right? You got guys that are lifelong lieutenants, lifelong captains. They retire in that position. They never become a battalion chief. They never become a chief, a deputy chief, assistant chief, whatever the hell it is, you know? So part of recognizing it, people it still strengths, happens though. Yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, I'm sure it does still happen. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just, maybe it's not as prevalent. Yeah, they they get promoted. Like, they get promoted for a year, and then they get told, "If we promote you, you got to retire." <laughs> yeah, because yeah. they hate them. Yeah, promote yeah. beyond your abilities. That's kind of something that that we yeah. have seen for sure, and uh, at our department as well. Yeah. So, all right, guys. Well, good conversation. Yeah, think, good yeah. stuff. Good, good stuff for sure. So. Um, this is going to be this is going to be posted on uh, on on my pa- podcast at Professional Volunteer. All right, Jeremy, give your give yourself uh, your do plugs, please. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be on the Crew First Culture podcast as well. I think we're pretty much mirrored as far as the two podcasts, kind of pretty much available anywhere you can find them. So, I think uh, you are you putting it on YouTube as well. That you said. Uh, you, you know Try what? To. Cause John yeah. fixed it. Cause John fixed his hair and, uh, and yeah, he's, he and he's live from the kitchen. Oh, he's, he's live from the kitchen. Yeah. We're going to throw it up on YouTube again. That, that we got a few. I'll tell you what, I got one of those spam emails that was like, get a hundred patches for a hundred bucks. Uh, I was telling, I was telling Brian and I was like, Hey, you know what? I'll do it. It took like six months, but they came out pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> they looked pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They came out cool. I'll have to send you one. So, uh, John just flashed his patch for those of you not watching on YouTube, watching on crew or listening on crew first culture or professional crew first culture podcast. Um, yeah, I don't have a podcast. Yeah. If you're, if you're listening on one of the podcasts, <laughs> he just flashed his patch. If you're a patch trader, I'm sure he would love whatever you have <laughs> and, uh, he'll send you a patch for something. Yeah. I don't know for what. So I'm not John, sure. plug it up. I should sell them. I should sell them for like, eight dollars a patch you know make some money on them there you go anyways but uh jersey shore emergency training instagram facebook no no uh youtube or podcast but yeah like i always say if you ever need anything reach out i'm here for you he's becoming a regular co-host so yeah really yeah i could it's on my website too if you go to jersey shore emergency training the uh link to you you could listen right on my webpage to um, Chief Soller. So yeah, man, good stuff. I appreciate that. Well, fellas, thanks again. I uh, I appreciate your uh, I appreciate your time, your your friendship, your professionalism, and uh, your thoughts on the on the topic. So uh, uh, for me, this will be uh, you'll be listening to this on Wednesday. Um, geez, we're at the end of May here, right? It's almost Memorial Day weekend. Almost, yeah. There, yeah. Yep. So yep. it'll be on. It'll be on. Uh, live for me on Wednesday, Jeremy. When are you posting? What what day? I'll you... I'll probably just kind of follow Throw you up. up. I don't want to jump ahead or anything. So no, I'll, all right. whatever, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, sure. I, I'm not on any schedule. I just kind of throw it out when it comes. So all right, cool, cool. I'm gonna do it Wednesday as well. All right, everyone. So thanks again for listening, guys. Thanks for being here. Have a uh, have a great uh, rest of your weekend and week, and uh, stay healthy and stay safe. All right. See you. See you. Thanks, guys.